So I feel like I've given enough time for Overlord fans to consume Volume 14 and stick their teeth deep into it as possible. And of course, I've made a couple of videos beforehand discussing about different spoilers well in advance. So again, those videos are out there. But I feel like this volume was very interesting. Again, it's a very thick volume. It goes over a lot of stuff. And there's a lot of major, I would say, developments that happen in this particular volume. But you can definitely feel that this volume is trying to wrap up a major part of the story. And I've said in previous videos that I don't think there is enough room to finish all of the sort of loose ends. And I feel there are still going to be some loose ends after he has finished the final volume, which there are three more to come. And that has been officially confirmed from his mouth. I just want to point that out before people say, oh, but it's meant to be 40 volumes. No, it's only 17 volumes that he has planned. He has juggled around different numbers depending on his moods, but he has sort of sat down and put in stone that he is going to be finishing in three more volumes, which again, he has definitely hinted at what the next volume is going to be about, which is of course going to be about the elf kingdom themselves and going out there and having a bit of fun. I will say, I enjoyed the Renair part because I've always been a very big fan of Renair. I love her connivingness, the forward thinking, and just how she's kind of, you know, one of those very manipulative and smart individuals. Putting the Great Tomb aside, she is by far the most intelligent person in the new world itself. Ignoring the tomb. I have to emphasize that. Ignoring the tomb. But I still feel she's just so much fun to kind of read about because she's just completely gone wonkos. And she is again, got what she desires. She got Climb, she's got him wrapped around her little finger, and everything has gone exactly to plan. And now she has immortality as well. And of course, Climb will have the same as he has agreed to kneel to Irons, the great leader himself, the great overlord. I do find it kind of interesting because at the very end of the volume itself, you know, Climb was very adamant of trying to fight Irons and trying to fight back and protect her and everything. And then once he realized that she basically already bent the knee to irons he was just like you know what yep i'll do the same because he always wanted to be with her i do feel like climb isn't going to go through too many struggles i don't think she's going to dissect him and cut off his legs and arms as she mentioned in a previous volume where she's just like well i don't care if he has arms and legs as long as i get to keep him in like a little sort of cage and keep him to myself i don't think she intends to do that i think she generally wants a relationship that's meaningful but at the same time that doesn't mean she's completely all sane upstairs i mean there's still a couple of screws loose but i think you've got to be a little bit crazy to be kind of be in her situation particularly but i will say i i did like how that ended but i can definitely see that the author has changed pace as well with the light novels when you look at volumes 1 through 13 you can tell that the pacing is very much sort of almost like a, a long distance run but with volume 14 you can tell he has picked up the pace a bit and i don't think it's necessarily that he's rushing volume 14 but you can definitely tell that he is trying to pick up the pace and trying to clean a lot of major areas up and all those little loose ends he's trying to sort of just pick out and clean them up before the final volume itself i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing but i did read some comments from other overlord fans that they felt a little bit disappointed that the author kind of started to rush things a little bit and i i did say in a previous volume i think about four to six months back that that was something that i could foresee the author doing in these next three to four volumes was picking up the pace because of the simple fact that Again, he doesn't have many volumes left, and there is a lot of major plot points that he needs to finish, and I still don't think he will. I'm very skeptical if he's going to end up going out to the desert where there is believed to be a floating city out there with unlimited water falling from it. I'm very skeptical if he ends up going out there. I really would like him to, but I just don't see that being the case. I could see the author finishing the story off at volume 17, taking a break, and then maybe being like, hey, I might do another volume or so afterwards i just feel like he really wants a long break but he wants to at least finish the major story up that's at least how i've kind of foreseen his mindset on twitter i think that's probably for the best but again if he ends up just dropping it and starting something else and, and ends up getting really wrapped up in that i could see him just ignoring overlord permanently but at the same time we've been getting a lot of spin-off manga side stories that are non-canon that are just sort of fluff fun enjoyable stuff as well so Again, there's plenty of Overlord content out there, whether it be canon or non-canon. I just really did like where the story started. You know, you had Philip trying to 
think he was some genius when in fact he was the biggest moron on the planet sort of thought he could put all these pieces together and be like well if i do this and then this and then this i'll be able to win alberto's heart and it's just like um is there a couple of screws up there missing mate because you really don't see that she does not have any interest in anyone other than irons and i think that's just kind of it i think he's just sort of in his own reality thinking that he's got this whole thing mapped out and that's the fun thing about the light novel and the previous ones when discussing about philip was that when you get into his mindset he is just completely idiotic he is just in his own dream state it's almost like he's sleepwalking through reality he is this entitled individual that he's so hard done by and he does manipulate a couple of people to kind of work alongside him but then things just kind of don't really play out the way he thought it would and i think the best part about it was the ending of the volume itself when he ends up seeing all the dead bodies and it's just kind of like the reality hits in that yeah it didn't quite go the way you thought it would boy i will say the only disappointing part about the light novel and it's really the only disappointing part is that irons is kind of getting really lazy now he's just kind of like you know what i don't really want to manage all this so let's just wipe out as many people as possible you know spread these people into different towns groups and i'm just gonna go off an adventure and let's go to the elf kingdom i do feel like irons has kind of got to that point where he's just like he kind of reminds me of the author a little bit he's kind of fed up a little bit and you can kind of see the author a little bit in irons where it's kind of like this journey's gone on and on and on and irons is just kind of like you know what this is a little bit too much work for me i'm just gonna you know wipe them all out clean everything up and go off on my merry way it's just kind of a fun little comparison when you look at it it's my only gripe because again when you look at the evil eye side story obviously the tomb was able to manage conquering all these different areas and manage them quite well but at the same time irons doesn't really have that same mindset so i'm curious to see if he will use that same mindset going forward or will he try and maybe you know bully other groups into serving him and not end up wiping out you know the bulk of the population it's it's going to be interesting i think the other thing that also kind of struck a chord with me was to do with brain brain of course dying in the way he did and of course kokaida's respecting and giving an honorable warrior's death that was kind of a nice touching part as well i kind of felt like that was a little bit short-lived as well the fight just was very short and sweet but at the same time it is brain going up against kokaida so of course it was going to be short and sweet but i just kind of was thinking that there might be a little bit more to it i will also say the dragon fella that also entered into this volume as well was an interesting sight to be seen and pandora's actor going up against him as well i think the most interesting part was how pandora's actor fought against this dragon and particularly the part that really stood out to me was when Pandora's actor kneeled and kind of showed a little bit of mercy and a little bit of, you know, weakness so that he could probe a little bit of information. And then when he went to report to Irons, Alberto was getting all a little irate. He was like, oh, you dishonored Irons. And Irons is like, no, this was kind of smart. And I really do respect Pandora's actor. I sometimes think Pandora's actor can sometimes really, really show far more intelligence than what Alberto does at times. I think Alberto lets her pride get in the way rather than thinking logically and thinking more about the long-term ramifications and that is one thing i really love about pandora's actor he throws away pride and thinks about the long-term goals particularly of course that particular scene where he kneels and shows you know a little bit of weakness so that he can get some information out of this fella i felt that was really quite an interesting way of looking at it because again if it was our better in that same position she would have just fought to the bitter end and killed him as soon as possible in the honor of irons and showing how brutal and strong he is and his raw dominance but pandora's actor was a lot more cunning and a lot more manipulative and using clever tactics to probe information out and that's why i think irons using pandora's actor in the way he has is the smartest tactic out there because i don't think the other floor guardians particularly demi and alberto would have done the same thing pandora's actor is just to me he can be a little bit more wiser in his decisions they're all three of them are super intelligent but i think pandora's actor knows how to execute that potential in the right way and doesn't let his pride get ahead of him though of course pandora's actor is just silly and out there and it was really good to see a little bit more of pandora's actor because i've really missed seeing pandora's actor because 
you kind of only see him like for a short period and then he kind of goes back into the background and you see a lot of focus on Albedo and Demi and particularly that is still the case in this volume of course Albedo does a lot of fighting in this volume and of course at the very start she's kind of having that sort of internal debate about certain things and her mistrust towards Demi I don't think it's even really mistrust I just think she's a little bit over controlling she likes to sort of be the center of attention for Irons because of her infatuation Albedo is just so many layers of like puzzling because I know Renee's mindset but with Albedo she kind of flip-flops very quickly on her mindset so the two of them kind of go very hand in hand they're very similar in what they're trying to achieve which again Renee has achieved her goal while Albedo is still trying to achieve her goal of being Riv Irons she does it a very weird and unique way about it but at the same time I think we all know she's never really going to get very far Riv Irons unless something drastically changes Riv Irons's mindset and physical appearance which I don't think that's ever going to be the case. Albedo just kind of feels she's a little bit more unstable while Renee she's very cuckoo and crazy she knows what she wants and she's driven and she's aiming for that goal and in the end she got that goal albedo just seems a little bit too coin flip like one minute she's okay next minute she's a little bit crazy distrusting people it's just it's just an interesting bag of worms to say the least i would say the only other thing that i really really wanted to see in this volume and i was really disappointed because i i really wanted to see it i wanted to see climb and sebas reunite in some way that kind of like helped push climb into wanting to bend the knee i kind of get that it was more about showing climb's dedication and loyalty towards renair because very much in that certain stage where even the king himself said you know grab her and run and you can have her marry her and he's like mm -hmm, you know it's tempting and she was very happy about that i think what really kind of i was really hoping for even if it was at the end of the volume where like you know he wakes up and everything's kind of you know coming back to him he's still sort of dozing off and on because you know he's c coming back from the dead and renee's kind of there you know nursing him back and then sebas is maybe standing by his side basically showing that he serves irons that would have just been kind of a nice little touch i just kind of wanted to see the climb sebas reunion because i always felt that climb looked up to sebas as someone important maybe that might happen in the next volume where they end up reuniting and they end up talking and it kind of puts climb's mind at ease a little bit by making the decisions that he has made i again i really did like the volume overall looking at it from package I enjoyed it the only thing that i can kind of foresee is that the author has picked up the pace and my concern is that there is still going to be a lot of loose ends untied up maybe he does a spin-off side story that kind of finishes off some other minor stuff or it's just going to be left to the imagination i have a feeling there's going to be a lot of fan stories that kind of tie those parts up We'll just have to wait and see but again i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below what did you like about volume 14 what are your hopes for volume 15 i think it's very easy now to tell because in my previous prediction when looking at volume 14 i thought it was going to be about the elf kingdom i think most of us kind of figured that but then it wasn't it's very obvious now that volume 15 is going to be about the elf kingdom i mean Eins basically says it straight up hey we're off to the forest we're going to check out what's over there and because he's kind of wrapped things up with the other stuff yeah it's very obvious the direction that he's going at and i feel like volume 15 is going to be heavily focused on the elf kingdom and then you've got two more volumes to wrap up some other parts i'm curious to see where it goes i look forward to kind of learning more about different powers and abilities that the author's got in mind for the elf kingdoms themselves and if there's going to be any internal conflict over there I, again it's going to be interesting to see how the author does but again i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below what did you like about it who are your favorite characters that stood out in this volume any and all thoughts are definitely welcome in the comment section down below but if you like this video hit the like button subscribe for more anime content and i will see you beautiful nerds in the next video